have five that are short, and let's see if uh, Charles can keep me on target here. Uh, two from my uh, recent publication. Uh, this arose from seeing a, a photograph that uh, showed up in the family album, and at my age, you become an archivist. But this is a wonderful picture that we have. She is ready, purse packed, one hand pocketed in resolution, standing by her charge. Will she fly through puffball clouds, piercing azure heavens like a needle? Or will she cruise majestically across the land, blowing tumbleweeds and sagebrush in her wake? Perhaps the sea shall feel the power of her legs, the undulations of her mermaid form. For she is ready, glowing hair pinned sleekly back, the keys clutched in her hand. She is the girl with the 56 Plymouth bins. <laughs> Uh, we spend a lot of time in Africa, and uh, this poem comes out of uh, Africa. There is a rift on earth where we emerged unnatural in parting. A long gash in her belly stretching from the mouth of the Zambezi to the source of the Euphrates. Never healing, angry lesions fester in its fistules, fighting over scabs of land where earth could not contain abundance nor conceal her pain. Her children scatter, warring over birthright, over mothers and their milk, their purity, their blood. They say the sun can heal a wound, provide the light to drive out fear, the warmth to ward off night. But here the sun is not enough, baking in the pain, the memory of eruptive birth, searing stillborn hopes of mending earth, ending rift, knitting lands together, making round and whole. In dread of fire, perhaps we need the rain again, bowing to our need. As some of you know, I'm a recovering theologian. And, uh, <laughs> uh, I read Bible stories, and this one's from the Gospel of John. And this is my take on it on Mother's Day. Caught in adultery, she collapses at his feet, covering her full hair flowing face on gravel bleeding knees, clutching baby shoes, a necklace round her throat from the man she loves too much. Uh, Peter McCook told us there's a type of poem called a how-to poem today. And of course then you go back through your poems and you see, oh, here's that genre, and sure enough, I chose one of those types of poems for tonight, called The Learning Curve. Now let me show you. Take the right lace, lay it over and under the other one. You pull them tight, that's half the knot. Then take the right hand, no, you're right, not mine, and make a bow. Now here's the tricky part. The left one goes over the bow and under it down behind. Now pull it part way through the loop it makes, that's right, and pull it tight. There. Now the finished bow lies down like beagle ears across your shoe. It won't come loose. You never have to double tie them anymore, Dad. <laughs> it's a true story.
course of another one of the years. Uh, we live uh, in the western mountains, mountainside, in the woods, uh, and um, the trees are really important for us, okay? And on the way up to a waterfall near our house, um, there is a great basswood tree that we uh, watch, and this is about the basswood. Last night, the basswood fell clean across the trail to the waterfall. For 20 years, we watched it leaning, roots hidden underneath the humus of 10,000 falls, locked within the splintered mantle of our mountain. With every annual ring, it yielded to the pull of earth until it rested in the arms of slender buckeyes and a cherry tree. Holding it, they danced five winters, let their leaves play in palpitation, changed their dress from mossy green to calico before they fell in trusting premonition. The night was still when its time came. I, with every creature, heard it when the cherry and the buckeye received the basswood's death. And in embrace, they fell together in our way. 